Hey Midnight Quilters, tonight I'm making a quilt from the inside out. It's a pattern based on a traditional log cabin with a warm colored center that's sure to keep me cozy at night. This campfire quilt was designed by Susie Williams of Susie Quilts, and I love the big log cabin layout that it makes. But I have to admit, I may have picked it because of the name. Campfire reminds me of my days back in the Girl Scout troop. Yeah, I was a Girl Scout. I mean, I never got the sewing badge, but I did get a first aid merit badge and camping, so there's that. All right, back to the quilt at hand. Let's check out these colors. A little bit of coral, just a bit, and then some warm colors like the flames, cooking s'mores and then of course some blues. So this color palette is so fun and interesting, not something I see all the time, which is why I'm excited to work with it. But since this is a big log cabin quilt, there's lots and lots, and I mean lots of strips, so I better get to cutting. So I'm gonna start cutting all these beautiful colors into strips and then end with a big square for the center of my quilts. I can't wait to see the colors alternate with the background fabric to make that really cool log cabin design. It's kind of fun to think that this little square is gonna end up in a big campfire quilt. Well, I'm gonna start sewing my strips around my square and we can start to see this quilt come together. Like any good log cabin quilt, we're gonna start with a center square and sew strips to either side of it. But she changes things up just a bit and works from two sides of the block and then alternates and works from the other two and that's what gives it its really neat layout. First step is to sew a background strip to the side and bottom of my square. And the great thing about her pattern is she doesn't stress out about numbers, she just has you sew them on and cut them to size. However, I'm gonna rough cut out a couple of these so that I can get into a good rhythm when I get to piecing. So just a really basic rough cut. So this will be the first one I put on. And then the next one. The second color will be this beautiful curry. And I'm gonna do the same thing, sewing to the side, into the bottom. And again, just a real quick rough cut. Now as the strips get longer, I probably won't do this, but I don't wanna deal with a really big strip when I'm trying to lay out my block. So make sure you cut them out a little bit longer than you think you'll need them to be. Next, I'll start sewing, iron, and trim it to size. I mean, not to brag, but I was the top selling Girl Scout cookie seller in my troop for several years in a row. I was not the best sewing Girl Scout in my troop any years in a row, but you know, I've got my sewing down now. So now I'm gonna press the block and I have to be really careful. On this small strip, it's not as important, but as this quilt gets bigger and bigger, I don't wanna stretch out those strips. So I'm not using any steam and I'm just using a dry iron and pressing very carefully. Then a quick trim to size. Now I have that first strip on, I'm gonna add the second strip doing the same thing. Sewing it with a quarter inch seam, pressing it carefully, not stretching it out and trimming it to size. I mean, it shouldn't really be a surprise that I was the top Girl Scout cookie seller. I mean, I knew how to work that uniform. Super cute, little sash, little hat, all that stuff. And it didn't hurt that my dad was a manager of a uh, automobile repair place, and so he helped sell them too. But we would get those things in by the truckload. And I, I really feel like I do my best to support Girl Scouts this day by buying lots of cookies when they're available. As I'm trimming, I'm taking a moment and just making sure that I'm somewhat square. This will be my first indication that it's starting to stretch out a little bit. So far, so good. Of course, I'm only two strips in, so there's that. Careful trim. And the next one. So make sure I put it right back in position. Now it's time to add another color to my campfire. So I'm gonna do the same thing, sewing the strip to the side, pressing, trimming, and sewing another strip to the bottom. Now that I've added different colors to two sides of my block, I'm gonna do the same on the other sides. Starting with that background strip and sewing it along this side, pressing, trimming, and then doing the same on the top. It's not quite looking like a campfire yet, but it's starting to. So now what I'm gonna do is add my next color on the side and top, just like I've done already. Now at any point, if I start to find that it's getting a little wonky, a little um, mid-century modern, log cabin-ish, I can take my ruler and just square it up and then keep going. 
So now that the strips are starting to get longer, I'm not gonna worry about rough cutting them. I'm gonna go ahead and sew them on and then trim them afterwards. So Susie just had a baby, and that means she's up all hours of the night too, for a different reason, of course. And I texted her earlier to get a couple tips on how to handle this quilt, and I'm gonna share those with you in a little bit. This block may look perfect. Well, let's just say it's had a little personalization by yours truly. A couple times I sewed the strip on the wrong side. I sewed the strip on the top instead of the side. But after a kumbaya moment, I relaxed and realized it's all right, as long as the same color comes together. Now I'm gonna try to do it the way the pattern says, pay extra close attention. So let me add a couple more strips and see how it comes together. One thing that Susie said, a very important tip, was to be careful when I'm sewing my strips onto the block that I don't want to pull this fabric too much. It could make it stretch out of shape and make it not square. Instead, she said to hold it gently and let the machine pull the fabric through, and that's going to help keep me from getting those borders that are a little too long for the center. What I love about medallion quilts is since they come together from the inside out, I can really see it progress and see it build. And I could stop at any moment and call it done but a Girl Scout never quits, so I'm gonna see this through until it's finished. So that means I've got a lot of strips to add. I'll see you in a bit. So my campfire quilt is almost finished. I am so close. All I have to do is add the outer borders. So these borders aren't quite long enough. I'm gonna have to join them together, but I've actually already been doing that thanks to a great tip that Susie shared with me. So to join these longer strips, I'm actually using a mitered seam. What that's gonna do is make that seam blend in a little bit more so it's not quite as obvious. And it also makes it a little less bulky for machine quilting since I'm not hitting that one line all at once. And I've done it multiple times on the quilt and I'm gonna do the same with the outer borders. Don't be nervous about that angled seam. It's actually constructed the same way you would do your binding. Well, I'm gonna put my borders together, add them to the quilt and then get to the best part, the machine quilting. I'll see you there. It's so nice being able to ask Susie for tips on her campfire quilt. Don't you wish you could talk to her? Well, it turns out you can. She's gonna do a live Q&A for Blueprint, and I'm gonna tell you more about that later on in the episode. What kind of questions are you gonna ask her? About the quilt, quilting tips, parenting tips? You can even ask her stuff about her Mojo Minis class that she has on Blueprint. Hmm, lots of options there. You can leave them in the comments below, and she just might answer them during her live Q&A. Okay, as every Girl Scout knows, the second Girl Scout motto is to always quilt efficiently. Okay, well that's not really a motto, but it should be. So I'm gonna start quilting this with the most efficient designs that work through those long borders. Let's see how it goes. Starting from the side of one border, I'm gonna quilt a wishbone design. It's a line that angles down and loops back and goes the other direction, looping back and forth. The reason I'm picking the wishbone design is that I can easily make it touch the edge to transition into the next border. So I'm gonna continue quilting this wishbone design till I get as far as I can comfortably reach with my hands. Once I get to the edge of that area, I'm gonna run the design right into the seam of the border. This little transition spot is gonna make it easy to go right into my next design, which is going to be a swirl hook design. As I'm quilting the swirl hook, I'm quilting a line that curls in on itself, extends out into a hook, echoes back, and then continues. When I get to the top of my area, I'm gonna quilt it, of course, but I'm gonna stop again when it's touching the area. Since I'm gonna do wishbones in all the background strips, I'm gonna go right back into my wishbone design, quilting it in a third border. Picking designs that touch the edge makes it easy to transition in and out. So I wouldn't normally stop quilting, but I want to show you the path that I'm taking. Starting here, I'm quilting my wishbones down, my swirl hook back up, and then my wishbone's down. From this point, I'm gonna reposition the quilt and continue quilting that wishbone, coming back up to my swirl hook, hooking into that point where I already transitioned over and continuing my wishbone. This is gonna allow me to switch back and forth in between these borders without breaking thread or having to reposition the quilt a lot in between. The trick to this technique is as I'm quilting that swirl hook back up to where I started, I really wanna hook into that transition line, that area where I went from one border to the next. As I approach, I'm gonna stop and plot out my course and decide, you know, if I just add another little line right here, that's gonna take me right to that point. 
Even if it's not perfectly on the dot, when that whole quilt is finished, nobody's gonna see it. And if they do, just say it's supposed to be that way. I'm gonna continue quilting, go right to that transition point, and then go right back into my wishbones, working my way back down that area. And the time it takes to earn a first aid merit badge, I've quilted three of these borders. And just goes to show that quilting can be fun and efficient. The trick is picking designs that can run into the edge of the border. Well, I'm already thinking of all the different designs I can quilt, so I'm gonna get to it and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm all finished. This cozy, warm campfire quilt is finished. Between Susie's tips and my efficient quilting, I had an amazing time. I quilted wishbones, feathers, serpentine lines, all kinds of designs with one thing in common, they all touched the edge. It made it efficient and quick to quilt, gave it a beautiful texture, and really highlighted all those beautiful solid colors. You know my friend Susie from Susie Quilts. I met her at QuiltCon last year. She'll be going live on the Blueprint YouTube channel tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to answer your questions about this quilt. There's a link below to access the live event. Also, be sure to comment any questions you might have for Susie below. Well, I'm gonna get cozy under my campfire quilt and I'll see you soon on another episode of the Midnight Quilt Show. Happy quilting.